second session. We are starting the second session. Or oh, is it the third session or fourth session? Third. Third or fourth? Third. We are starting um, the afternoon ones. Um, I don't know what time you will want to go to lunch, but uh, by the grace of God, I think when we finish here, you want to go right away? Okay, so I can go on and on and on. Awesome, awesome. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 32. We deal with uh, the fresh perspectives on prayer. We're just eating on prayer throughout. Um, fresh perspectives on prayer. Fresh perspectives on prayer. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Sorry. 321. Uh, Luke 321. Mm -hmm. Now, when all the people were baptized, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also has been baptized, when Jesus also has been baptized, while he was still praying, while he was still praying, notice that, while he was still praying, the visible heaven was open. The visible heaven was open. Prayer opens the heavens. Yeah. Amen. Very clear. Prayer number two. Prayer opens the heavens and bring about visible results. Results become very visible. Nobody invests time in prayer and you don't see visible results unless there are there are issues with that person. Mm -hmm. But normally, normally, when you invest time in prayer and you spend great deal of time with the Lord in prayer, uh, prayer has the capacity and the power to open the heavens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four. Number three. Prayerlessness closes the heavens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to say that again. Prayerlessness closes the heavens. Yeah. So it means the size of my heavens and the opening thereof is determined by my prayer time mm -hmm. and my investment in prayer, oh, yes. amongst other things. Mm -hmm. But in the context of what we're talking about, uh, it is your own prayer that will widen the opening of your heavens. Mm -hmm. Less praying. The the, 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 the the size of the opening will also be affected. And when Jesus was praying, notice that when Jesus was still praying, prayer has the capacity to cause uh, results to come whilst you are still busy praying. Amen. Whilst you are still busy praying, prayer can also, you know, you can also be in a level where results come before you even say amen. You finish closing the prayer. Remember Peter in Acts chapter 12, Peter is locked up in prison, the church pray intensively uh, and, and then there is a knock at the door, the church is still praying, there is a knock at the door, the church is still praying, Peter was already in the door when the church was still praying. And it was a little girl called Rhoda who had the knock and opened the door and tell everybody that Peter is at the door. Sometimes God answers prayer whilst we are still praying. A I N G praying I N G present continuous. Okay, my English students. Non-praying sons of God will operate under closed heavens. Amen. Non-praying sons of God will operate under closed heavens. Praying sons of God will pray under open heavens. Talk about heaven. Heaven can either be brass or open. I'm sure you all know what is brass, right? Amen. Iron. My own heavens can be iron. It goes ding, ding, ding. It's an iron. But then my own heavens can also be open. So the determining factor is prayer, amongst other things. Those who criticize the ministry of prayer will be like the value of dry bones. Mm. 
valley of dry bones. Very, very dry. The Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. He took me to the valley of dry bones with bones that were very dry. I've never met a prayerful person who's dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I, for one, I, what, I, what I love really is to minister to prayerful people. It's so easy. So easy. Amen. Ask any pastor, ask any minister. They'll tell you it's so easy to minister to prayerful people. So easy. Some people, it's very difficult to minister to them because they're not prayerful. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, number five, number six. I don't know what number are we. All revival starts as prayer movement. Mm -hmm. All revival starts as prayer movement. So do a study on all revivals. You'll discover that all of them had the foundation of prayer. All of them. All of them. Revival is birthed at the womb of prayer and fasting. There's nobody who invests time intensively in prayer and they don't start to hear God directing them to do something for him. All great movements in Christ we started in prayer. Right. So what has been birthed by prayer is a principle must be sustained by prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Did you get that? Amen. If something is birthed by prayer, <clears throat> prayer must sustain it. It can't be birthed by prayer and then we want to sustain it by worship. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Number eight. Devotion must be planned. You must plan. Like what we said earlier, you plan it. Don't wake up on Mondays. Oh, Monday. I'm going to leave. Let me so my pray. No, 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 no. no. Devotion must be planned. You must plan your devotion. When a week starts, you must plan. What, what are we going to do this week devotionally? We plan it. We plan it. We plan it. When a man starts like right now, we should be having a plan already. How many first things are we going to do? Yes, sometimes we might not fully reach where we want to go. But there must be a plan in place. It's much better for me to plan prayers and maybe along the way I don't really achieve everything I've set as the target rather than not doing it at all. Yeah. Do you hear me? Amen. Uh, we can plan and say well, this week we're planning maybe to do one, two, three. Maybe something comes during the week and disturb that plan. We will not call it demonic per se, but at least we have planned. Plan. Plan your prayers. Plan your fastings. Plan. Plan. Yes, I know you are spiritual people. You are led by the Spirit of God. As many as they are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I know you are directed, but the Lord is okay. I, I, I like that. I enjoy that. But plan. Rather than being led by the Spirit of God into long fastings and so on, into long prayers and so on, it's okay. But you must also plan. Devotion must be planned. It must not be accidental. Yeah. All of a sudden, we just find ourselves hitting, you know, you know, you know, you know devotion is oh, I, by accident. I, I was in prayer. No. You plan. Is there a person next to you? Say, pray your. Plan your prayers. In line with your schedules. In line with how your day looks like. That's why I said you must guard against arrogance and pride because some people's days are, 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 are intense with a lot of things. They, 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 there's, a, there's a couple we pray with and this couple, they're raising a child, right? And they, they always say that it's not so easy to pray at certain times. I might give out certain times and say, we're praying between this time and this time. Mm -hmm. But you find that uh, due to them having uh, homeworks of children, raising children and so on, it's not doable yeah. Yeah. for them at that time. Mm -hmm. They say, rather, uh, can you allow us to start it from what time to what time? Mm -hmm. We'll still put in what we still need to put in, mm -hmm. but can we be allowed so in other words, so when we plan prayers, we also adjust them according to our problems. Mm -hmm. But at least we're praying. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say, at least we're praying. Amen. When you plan your prayers as well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this again. You must also look at your body. Mm. Your physical body. When is my body active? During the day, during the night. 
when is my body really at work? I mean, when is the right time that my body, you must know your body. How much can it take at certain times? And how much it can take at certain times? So that plan must involve, uh, must involve your, your, your physical body as well. Because it's going to be your physical body that will carry you in your devotion. Yes, you are anointed. Yes, you are on fire. But the same body you have will have to carry you. Yes. That's why some of you, you need to also invest in physical training. Mm. These things that you are doing are going to need a person who is fit. You understand? These things that you are doing are going to need somebody who is what? Feet. You must know the dynamics of exercises. You must know how to stretch the body and, and so on so that you are active. For example, there will be times that I will put certain times that I will require to cut on certain things that are good for me, that I enjoy and like doing. And then you realize that I've got a program that is starting maybe at exactly at 8 in the evening. So it means that any football game that is playing from half past 5 to 8, even if it's my favorite team, I must avoid that. Because I can watch football from half past 5 until 8. Yeah. The prayer starting starts at 8. Mm. But I've been watching football. The, three, the two hours or three hours that I should have been sleeping, I've been wasting them watching my favorite TV yeah. program. Boom, we are meeting at 8. Now I'm starting to pray. Mm. At half past 8, I'm dosing already. I'm rebuking some things. And there's no <laughs> there's, sorry, there's, <laughs> There's no, there's no spirit to rebuke. There is just a physically tired body that should have been rested. I have been enjoying Mamelodi and Downs for 90 minutes, two hours wasted watching football. Come prayer time, I'm now dozing. And I'm thinking, some things don't want me to pray. No, there's nothing that doesn't want you to pray. You wasted time waiting. I mean, you know, okay. There are TV programs that most of you like. You're going to have to sacrifice certain things at some stage. Yeah, yeah. Because your effectiveness is going to demand a certain physical aspect of your body in prayer, in devotion. Watch. Somebody say, watch, watch what you do with your time. And cut away certain things. That is for those of you who really want to invest in devotion. Cut away certain programs. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, by now I know you are matured. You're no longer sitting for soapies from five until half past nine. By now I know you, you've graduated from skill sum and stuff. And I know you. I'm not saying it's wrong, but uh, I think with the programs you have, those are some of the things you need to cut so that you, you find yourself active in terms of devotion. Nothing wrong with that if you're watching, but if there's going to be a marathon of prayers and devotion that you are personally put, you have, you have put them down as goals to achieve. You're going to have to cut certain things. Okay? So, what, what are we saying? When you plan your prayers, you check your physical body. How much can my body take? When you are supposed to sleep, sleep. I did something a few days ago, um, a few years ago, okay, but I repeated it a few days ago. Uh, it's a mistake I didn't learn from it. It's not, uh, it's, it's a good and a bad mistake to have. So, okay, this is what I did. One time I had this mindset that every time when I may be going to particular sessions, I must not eat. I must be intensively in prayer and avoid meals. So I organized another meeting. I called the believers there, there, and then the meeting starts. And I've not eaten. I've not been drinking. And I'm supposed to minister in the meeting. When they minister, it was very, very hard for me physically. My body could not take it physically. After the service, I was so disappointed and so unhappy with the Lord. It's like if he was here, I was going to, you know, ask him certain questions. <laughs> Concerning what did not happen in the service. Mm. Uh, before I do the, you know, uh, the beauty of the Lord. The Lord spoke to me and said, um, 
big day. You know, I'm just assessing the whole thing. I like assessing mm -hmm. sessions afterwards. So I'm assessing the session and, and I'm alone. The Lord said to me, uh, I think, uh, not, not, not a thing. He said, um, you should have eaten in that service. Mm -hmm. Physically food. You, you should have taken food. Mm -hmm. huh? I should have taken food. But I wanted to go into the service without eating. Uh, he spoke to me in November. It was very clear that you should have eaten. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in prayer. Hey, I was supposed to eat before ministering, and I'm doing stuff that is that is demanding so much on my physical body, and I'm physically weak. But I want God to help these people. Hey, you should have eaten. You understand? So what I'm saying uh, is just yes, sometimes you must also take. Where you need to take water, take water. Mm -hmm. Where you need to take meals, take meals. Where you need to sleep, sleep. Because devotion must also take, take must not, we must not be ignorant to the needs of our physical bodies mm -hmm. in the name of devotion. <laughs> right. Because there are goals we set, spiritual goals that we want to achieve. But can you imagine um, if, if you are going to take you know, uh, that long without say, taking water. Even if you want to devotionally, you know, you know, devote yourself to, to God, but you, you have to take certain things. So plan by looking also at the effectiveness of your physical body. Because it's your body that carries that anointing, that carries the spirit. Okay? Yeah. So plan your prayers, plan your fasting, plan your Bible studies. Never do Bible study when the pastor is preaching. Then mm. you are writing some things. Studying mm. right now. What we're you don't study here. Here you listen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. Especially prophets. You like studying the Bible now. <laughs> when, now when I open another scripture, now you are hearing God from certain verses there. <laughs> It's not the platform. It's not the platform. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I ask you to read certain verse, and then now you're getting all kinds of things opening up for you from certain verses. There. Now you want to glue, you know, your your focus on that. For, but there is something going on that you should be focusing on. So you plan your Bible studies. You plan your, your devotion. You plan your Bible studies. You plan your altar moments. You plan them. And as much as you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit for certain times and certain moments of devotion, but there are some that you must plan. Somebody say you must plan. You must plan, you must plan and set clear yeah. goals. No, don't pray without a clear goal. What do you want to achieve with that prayer? Set a goal. And when you set that goal, you also set times. I intend to do this maybe in 30 minutes. You put time. Yes, as much as you're not going to be focusing on... I said 30 minutes. Why is not coming? You said times. You said times. You said goals. Every prayer must have a goal. What are, what are we going to achieve? Okay? Number nine. There are things that only prayer can achieve, not your church decoration, mm -hmm. not good sound equipment, yes. not your good voice, mm -hmm. not branding. I know most of you are consumed nowadays by branding. You brand yourself, you call yourself a brand. It's okay, it's marketing. Um, <laughs> but, friends, it's critical, that, ladies and gentlemen, that you must know that branding is good, but it's not going to achieve for you what the, 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 what the prayer life is going to achieve. Just check social media right now. There are all kinds of posters that are going out towards Passover. Beautiful meetings, beautiful designs, and all of that. We applaud that you should celebrate Passover. But if you go into that Passover meeting without prayer, your poster is not going to, to achieve yeah. spiritual things for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good design is not going to achieve that for you. Mm -hmm. It can be appealing to the eyes of the beholder, but it's not going to achieve for you spiritual results. 
It's beautiful to have a good poster. It's beautiful to have a t-shirt. I saw some of us were wearing t-shirts yesterday. Those things are okay. But a t-shirt cannot achieve for us what must be achieved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the presence of the Lord, therefore, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, we can't, we can't relegate it just to a good poster that is a good poster that will draw the attention of the people in this community. Put very beautiful posters all around and, and banners and so on. It's good to have, but they are not going to achieve for you what prayer will achieve for you. In, in, with regard to that meeting. Number 10. Beautiful setup, excellence, marketing strategies, branding, interior design, decor are not and should never be substitutes for the presence of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. They are not. Don't substitute what must be achieved by the presence of the Holy Spirit and substitute it by interior decor. Beautiful screens, beautiful, you know, you know, all kinds of, you know, you know, designs in the church. Beautiful setup. I mean, who doesn't want to be in a beautiful setup? We all want to be, right? But can it achieve for you what the Holy Spirit, through His presence, can achieve for you? You can have a very beautiful setup with screens here and there. It's beautiful, wonderful, but failing to achieve for you what must be achieved by prayer. There is no substitute for prayer. There is no substitute for anointing. There is no substitute for the Holy Spirit. Have all beautiful things and gadgets and all of that. They will never achieve for you what prayer must achieve for you. Okay? I've said this in the previous session. Number 11. Make it a habit to pray with your pastor. Make it a habit. You're going to bond. And it will eliminate unnecessary fighting. Yeah. It will eliminate unnecessary differences. The differences that people have. You check it. Check, check, check the differences you have with people. Most of it, it has to do with people you don't pray with. You hardly, you hardly, you hardly fight with people you pray with. Yeah, you hardly, 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 you hardly. Check, check it. All the people you are not finding each other. Check if you have been praying together. You'll discover that no, I'm not really. Okay. Number twelve. First Peter three verse seven. There are a number of things that hinders our prayer. First Peter 3 verse 7. Chapter 3 verse 7. Let's look at what, what, what can hinder our prayers. Yeah, you, you find somebody married next to you and look at them as we're reading the scripture. <laughs> you find somebody married and just look at them and say, okay. In the same way. In the same way. You married, you married men. You married men should live considerately with your wives. Yeah. <laughs> with an intelligent recognition. Yeah, like it's like the scripture, very much. Of the marriage relation, mm. honoring the woman mm. as physically as the weaker, mm. but realizing that you are joined as of the grace. Of mm. life, mm. in order that your prayers may not be hindered yeah. and cut off. Okay. And an happy wife will cause your prayers to be hindered. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> and an happy wife will cause your prayers to be hindered. Yeah. Never make your wife unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> so long as your wife is unhappy, your prayers are going to be hindered. Are you hearing? Amen. One of the most important things you must understand in marriage is that once your wife is unhappy mm -hmm. about something and she's right about that thing, forget about your prayers being answered. Mm -hmm. An unhappy wife yeah. will cause your prayers to be hindered and cut off. Mm -hmm. It's true. First Peter 3 verse 7. 
Let me repeat. Unhappy wife causes your prayers to be hindered. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when a wife is unhappy by something that is right, your prayers are going to be hindered amongst other things. Unforgiveness will cause your prayers to be hindered. Amen. It's a waste of time to pray. You're not forgiving. Amen. You're hindering your own prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is that call night and day? Hi. Praise the Lord. Uh, unforgiveness can cause your prayers to be hindered. Unforgiveness. Uh, when you've, you've got, you, when you are a family, husband and wife, make sure that every unresolved tension is resolved before you attempt to pray. Amen. Unresolved differences and contentions mm -hmm. that you're even contending amongst each other and cause your wife to be unhappy. In that space, God takes the side of the wife. Okay. Go and resolve the issue with each other and then pray. Don't have issues with people. Yeah. Hello, Basalan? Amen. Matthew 5, 23-24. Don't have issues with people. If you want your unnears to come, and to be answered, don't have issues with people. Mm -hmm. no? Don't have issues with people. Let's leave. Mm -hmm. hey. mm -hmm. See if when you are offering your gift mm -hmm. on the altar, mm -hmm. you then remember that your brother has any gift, grievance against you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Leave your gift at the altar. Thank you. And go. There are things you shouldn't continue until yeah. continue and go and first make peace first. with your brother. First, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. make peace with your brother. Jesus. Anything you lay at the altar and there are issues with people are a waste of time. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of time because it's, 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 a, it's an empty exercise nothing is going to come out of that exercise so uh, ladies and gentlemen resolve your issues with people yes sometimes there are people who make it very difficult for reconciliation to happen but god judges the intention god will look at you and say have you made effort did, did you have any intention to have this thing resolved he looks at the intention he looks at the motive because I know, I mean, there are difficult people that sometimes you try mm. to, to, you know, to, 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 to do that verse, mm. but they don't make it possible. Mm. It's okay. It's not, it's no longer now on your side. Mm. If you try it, yeah. he judges that. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, I just saw from far that I, this person, yeah. it's not going to make it possible. Yeah. Have you tried? Mm. Okay. There are prayers of people that we have wronged. Yeah. Mm. Yeah? You're sitting next to a person. Mm. Sometimes you can wrong other people. Mm. And then they pray. Mm. Yeah. There are also prayers of those who have wronged you. Mm. Both of them will pray. Mm. Sometimes when you have really broken the heart of somebody, they, they can pray certain prayers against you. Mm. Mm. Wanting God to act on you. You as well, sometimes when certain people have wronged you, you sometimes make certain prayers, especially from the book of Psalms. <laughs> I know, I know. You go to the book of Psalms and pick certain scriptures there, and pray certain prayers against them. Listen up. God does not take sides. He will always stand on the side of the truth. Amen. Amen. You don't know. Maybe it's not happening here. There are people who pray against you. Mm. To God. Mm. Against you. Mm. To God. Mm. Amen. And make mention of your name. To God. Amen. Because they think that the fact that they are bleeding or hurt about something you've done to them, God is also hurt. Amen. So they want God to side with them. Amen. 
and x. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there are also people who don't like you who might pray certain prayers mm -hmm. against your destiny. Amen. Okay? So God always stand on the side of God and judge intentions. Read 2 Samuel 22 verse 42. Fresh perspectives on prayer. 2 Samuel 22 mm. verse 42. They looked, but there was none to save, even to the Lord. But he did not answer them. I repeat that again. There are people who are looking at the Lord for the, for the Lord to answer. Mm. 2 Samuel 22, verse 42. They look. They look. Certain people. To God. Mm. Continue. But there was none to save. There was none to save. Mm. Even to the Lord. If they looked even to the Lord. And the Lord. Uh, does not reply. There are people who are against you, who want the Lord to answer mm. their intentions and desire for you uh, by talking to God that God must deal with you. Mm. Mm. That's what that verse is saying. Mm. They don't like you. They don't agree with you. But then it has escalated to a level where they want God to deal with you because they're not happy with you concerning something okay god does not answer prayers of evil Amen. Amen. against you he doesn't they plead with god god can you deal with so and so so god is going to look at what why should we deal with so and so okay he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. Good news version say they look for help, but no one saves them. The part that I want is they call to the Lord, but he does not answer. These are evil people. There are people who are your enemies who are calling unto the Lord in order for them to win over you. There are prayers that are directed against you so that you fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh. We must like this. There are people who will feel very good if indeed if God was going to answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who are praying that God must cause you to fail in order for them to feel avenged yeah. and the score settled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very easy. They want to involve God in that. There was another time we spoke about the higher people. Some, some can even hire people to deal with you. Like Balaam who was hired by Balak to deal with the Israelites. I'll pay you so much, deal with so and so. Okay? So there are prayers of those who seek help from God to achieve their wrong agenda. They will feel that indeed God has answered them when something wrong has happened to you and they feel that God has replied. Okay? They, they, they're fighting, they're opposing and standing against you. Then they make prayers in that space so that God can finance their feelings. God does not answer the prayer of a person who is on the wrong side, especially against the person who is right. Amen. Amen. In scripture. Did you hear me? Amen. Especially when they are right. Okay. So, he does not honor their words. They can make a decree against you. But if you're on the right side, God doesn't honor those decrees. Mm. 
when you have issues with somebody, it doesn't mean that God as well is having issues with that person. Yeah. It doesn't mean that. Yeah. Your prayers <laughs> against that person will not be answered. Uh, is there a believer next to you? Mm -hmm. There's one prayer that God always you know, likes to respond to. is the cry of mercy and justice. Amen. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. The Lord always responds to the cry of mercy and justice. Even if he's a sinner. Even if he's a what? Yes. Let me show it to you. If you mistreat somebody, openly so, and mistreat them, abuse them, or wrong them. You are a believer. You are on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. And then this person is not saved. Mm -hmm. They cry out to God whom they don't even have a relationship with for mercy and justice. God is going to, resp to respond. Mm -hmm. God is going to respond because he responds to the cry of mercy and justice. Okay. What number are we? Sometimes when we wrong people, their silence can also invite things upon our lives. Amen. Why? Say you wrong person A. And person A does not respond, does not fight back, does not do anything. They just keep quiet. There is a God of mercy and justice who is going to look at that. To say A was mistreated, A never responded, A never answered back, A never said anything. Let me intervene. Let me intervene. I think let me stop there for this session. I think let me stop there for this session. <laughs>